Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a first video on how I use my EMR to um, run my practice without any staff. I think it's critical to leverage technology for this to work well. You don't have to use the same EMR as me. I use MDHQ because it had all of these features, but there are lots of EMRs out there that may do what you need them to do. So just do some research around. Um, Atlas MD is a big one for uh, for anyone doing DPC, there's multiple different options for solo practice uh, or micro practice if you're billing insurance um, that will actually integrate with billing. So there's there's different options out there. Make sure that it has the features you need to run your practice smoothly. Some of them have most of the features. Some of them have you know workarounds. So make sure you you ask questions ahead of time. Um, if you choose to do MDHQ um, and you let them know you watch this video, uh, my name is Robin Dickinson, if you want to use my real name, they can uh, make yours look like mine in the ways you like it, and you can tell them then which things you don't like and have them make it differently for you. If you choose a different EMR, you can um, still show them this video and tell them what you liked about it, and have if they do customization as well, you can have them uh, do those things that work for you here and change things that don't work for you. Again, this is it's all about doing how it works well for you. This is how it works well for me. So um, this is John Doe's patient portal. He's obviously not a real person. Um, but I'm gonna show you how the portal allows me to do everything without staff. Um, so John can go in here in his portal. It's It works beautifully on cell phones, on tablets, and on computers. Um, that's really important. You need to in this day and age, make sure patients are going to be able to use it on their cell phone. The majority of my patients use their smartphones. Very few of them use it on the computer. Um, so it needs to work for Android and iPhone. Um, they, he can go in and, and change account details. That's his address, his phone number. I have my patients put in their insurance information, even though I don't bill their insurance, because it helps with um, referrals and things like that. Here's some key features you're going to need. So secure messaging is critically important um, if you want to manage with no staff because it cuts way back on phone calls. It's typically much faster. I mean, if like this this one right here, you can message, I need a refill on my thyroid medicine. Thanks. And then I can just reply uh, in a few seconds. Hey, I put in that refill for you. You're due for labs. I sent an order to the pharmacy or to the, uh, I sent a, an order to the lab. And that's something that, um, you know, it takes me a matter of seconds. It's much faster than a phone call, and I can do between patients if someone's running late while one of while the patient I'm seeing is doing a form. Um, so it makes me really use my time well. Patients, when they send a message, um, here's a little tip. I have them always check this box that says, "I understand the portal is for non-urgent issues only." In a previous EMR I was using, I once had a patient e message me asking if they should go to the e ER because they were worried they had appendicitis. Um, and I, of course, I did not get the message urgently like I should have, or for that type of question should have. And he did have appendicitis. It turned out fine. When I got the message, I called him immediately, and he was at the hospital having just had his appendix out. Um, so it worked out fine, but I uh, I highly recommend that you have a box like that. So when they send it, it comes to me. I'll show you sometime what it looks like from my end and how I take care of it. Um, but that's cut way down. I get zero to five phone calls a day um, because most stuff can go through the portal. This is another reason um, I don't have many phone calls. Patients can request their own appointments online. So um, you want to make sure that they're able to do the whole thing online. Maybe not necessarily, so in my case, um, you can see me just kind of doing it. They choose an amount of time. I don't actually do 15 minute appointments. I do nothing but 30 or 60 minute appointments. So if they choose 15, um, it actually schedules a 30 minute, but it makes them feel like they, some patients like feeling like they're just scheduling a fast appointment. So it gives them that choice. So like looking at Monday, July 18th, um, my husband's having surgery the next day, so I'm going home early, so I don't have a lot available, but they can schedule their 9 a.m. Um, you know, some people will write just nothing. Some people will write a paragraph. Um, you know, I've been having problems with my, you know, breakup and want to talk with you about medication, whatever. Um, and then they'll quick request appointment. So on my end, I'll then see that request. I can decide, is that something that can wait? Sometimes I'll message them and be like, you know, is this something that can wait till then? How are you doing right now? Um, 
Are you getting depressed? Do you need to see me sooner? I can give them a call if I feel it's, it requires it. When they click request appointment, it doesn't actually schedule it, but it does block my schedule. Um, so no one else can request that spot. But that also gives me some time. Like for instance, my husband's having surgery the next day. Let's say I forgot to block it. I wasn't actually intending to work that day. Um, I could be like, oh shoot, I didn't mean to work that day. And so then I can, it, they know they've just requested it. They haven't actually scheduled it. And so I can go in there and um, contact them and ask them if another day would work. I do have appointments available that aren't available on the portal so that I'm able to um, always get people in same day or next day as well. So these are just the ones for people scheduling out. Usually it's more available um, than that, but uh, that week's just a bit hairy. So um, other things, invoices and payments, this has been a huge headache reducer for me. Make sure you have an EMR where they can go in and add and edit their own credit card. It makes such a difference. Um, I used to have to add credit cards myself because I used a separate billing system. I'd have to print statements myself. Um, it was just a real pain. Having it all integrated means I don't think about money at all. It's all automated. As soon as a patient is in there as a patient, they're also in there as someone to bill, and I can do it within their note, which I'll show you in a different um, in a different video when I show you how I do things on my end. I have found questionnaires to be another thing, um, forms, whatever you want to call them, for people to be able to fill them out themselves um, online. Even in the office, I have a tablet and a uh, stylus because then I don't have any scanning or filing to do. Everything is automatically filed directly to their portal, I, or to their, uh, rather, their file in the EMR. So I don't have to scan, I don't have to shred, and I don't have to file. Um, that definitely saves me time and headache as well. So I highly recommend that. Um, do look at places that will let you customize. Some EMRs only let you put in their own forms. And if those don't happen to be the forms you use, you're kind of out of luck. Um, so like for me, it was important to me to be able to have an A score on everyone. I use it as a vital sign, um, adverse childhood experiences score. Um, so that's something I have everyone fill out. Um, I'm a DPC, direct primary care. So having this uh, list of household members is important. Um, and the membership agreement so that I can uh, keep everyone organized. I also bill Medicaid for a few people, so you can see that in there. But I use this for a lot of stuff. Um, mood questionnaires, pain contracts, um, other health forms. So that's uh, helped me cut down a lot on paperwork. Um, this next tab has cut down a lot on phone calls. So whenever I get lab results, as soon as I see the lab result, I file it in the correct patient's portal in their chart and send a message uh, to the patient with my explanation of the results all within the same little window. Um, that's also helped me cut down um, significantly on the amount of time that I spend doing my work and on phone calls. So patients then can go in here. So you can see um, earlier I put an ASQ, uh, developmental screening in for this patient. Um, so that's going to be sitting here for them as a handout. I, but let's say that I'd done labs, their labs would be right there and they can just click on them and their lab results will open in a new window and they can also read my recommendations related to that. Um, and then they can reply back with any questions and um, it's just very efficient. There's a whole string here that's um, useful for patients, doesn't really cut down that much on the time I spend, vitals, medications, supplements, vaccine record. Um, those are those are really nice for just patient care. It improves their patient experience and their um, compliance, which is nice. Um, pharmacies is nice. Every patient can go in and update their preferred pharmacy. On my end, I can also update all of their specialists, um, radiologists, everything like that, so that I can immediately send everything to where it needs to be. And then this is something definitely look for in any EMR you're looking at, some sort of visit summary um, or encounter history or uh, Something where when the patient appointment is done, they can then go in and uh, see what happened. Then they're not calling back asking questions as much and you'll improve patient compliance, which will improve their health, improve the number of times they need to come into your office. Um, if you're doing direct primary care, of course, improved patient health and improved compliance means you work less um, as well. So it, everyone's happier. So you can see here, so this patient I saw, I know it's a three-year-old, but this was a sample note I did, um, came in for high blood pressure, anxiety, and uh, problems related to upbringing. So discontinued Zoloft, discontinued Lisinopril, 
and here's a bunch of all right, I, 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 I wrote for those um, at the time. It's been discontinued since then because I keep using this as a sample. But here's some other stuff I recommended. I recommended a book. I recommended a TED Talk. Um, I put information for the call to crisis line. I recommended counseling. Um, I put in the summary of lifestyle changes. So all this stuff is right there. So he's able to go back after his appointment and can go ahead and, you know, go in here and go watch that TED talk. No problem at all. And anything else I recommend, they can follow up. Let's say he starts getting depressed. There's the phone number right there so that he's able to call and get help right away. So um, having that encounter summary available also helps immensely with patient care and with um, managing without staff. So like I said, use any EMR you like. Um, make sure that any of the features that looked useful here, your EMR is going to have. Um, some of them are customizable, so even if they don't have them right away, you can ask them for it. Um, you know, look at customer service. You're going to be using this for everything, so make sure they're going to be answering your calls um, and helping you if anything goes wrong. If you have any questions, certainly you can uh, write in the comments or you can um, message me directly. And uh, good luck and have fun EMR hunting.